a bumpy part of your flight path in this world. Don't hold grudge for anybody. You can take an example from what I went through. Those who have been in the army long enough, they know what I've passed through. Would I revenge? No. Because what I believe in is that if you as a human being, a mortal person like me, believe that you should decide how, what I should become, what I should get and I shouldn't get, and God says, no, I'm the creator and I'm the supreme authority and I decide what each of you gets. And I get what the Almighty has given to me. I don't think I would go back that low to take revenge for what you tried to, uh, what you did by try, trying to prevent me from being what I want to be. That is victory and that is faith and that is godliness. Uh, I have heard from many quarters. Oh, we need to Gambianize, we need to Gambianize, yes. It is not bad to Gambianize, as long as Gambians would live up to expectation. There are excellent Gambians, but there are also non-excellent Gambians. So in humanity, you find all states of huma human beings, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But at the end of the day, humanity is spelled humanity. The human race is the human race. And no matter where you believe you came from, you cannot escape the fact that you are created by the Almighty Allah and you came to this earth through Adam and Eve. So, in appointing any human being to any position in this country as in tandem with the constitution of the country. I don't care where you come from. What I care is your love for the country and your commitment to help develop this country, to make it a peaceful society, a prosperous society, and a God-fearing and law-abiding populace. That is the bottom line. Uh, with regards to Sabali, Many a time I remember, each time, the story of the University of the Gambia is unique. And I don't think even the Gambian pen can really write the whole genesis of the University of the Gambia. Uh, people also tend to overlook another important institution in this country. That's the television. When we talked about television, there was a um, uh, television, I think the previous government talked about it. And they were told that Gambia was not ready for a television, and they stopped there. They were told not by Gambians, but people that are non-African in, in the first place. The university, we were told, that is a waste of funds. It is more cost effective to send students to the UK and other con Commonwealth countries than to build a university. Interestingly enough, the World Bank and IMF team that came was led by an Indian, uh, an Indian lady for that matter, and then uh, the IMF was led by uh, a European. And I remember that time there was the war in Kosovo. And they told me that, uh, and then also at that time we were suspended. We were, all the programs with the IMF and World Bank were suspended. And this World Bank and IMF team came after I declared that to develop this country, I don't need the World Bank and IMF, the conventional World Bank and IMF. 
whether they suspend the aid or not, uh, uh, their programs or not, this country will be developed according to what I want if the Almighty Allah so approves. This was a, a confrontation we had with the European Union when they came and gave us six days to hand over power. And I made it very clear, when we came, did you hear of any executions? They said no. They said, in other African countries, the first thing you know that is a coup is the executions and firing squads. Yes. So if those people that we've overthrown, you think that they are such good governors, and uh, good governors, good administrators, I can do one thing for you. The former president is alive. Take him to your country, make him president, or make him a prime minister as you wish. But he will not be back to this country as a president of our, our dead bodies. They told us, well, all the, when we launched the program of development, our vision for the country, they told us that, well, all what we are saying it's not going to happen. In those days, uh, a time, uh, well, then one thing was very certain. You will always have electricity in the president's office. The rest was an epileptic supply of el electricity insufficient. So each time I know a delegation is coming from the EU or the West, I put the air condition off so that the, the office will be very hot. They took their time to lecture me about democracy and good governance, and I took my time to tell them that all what they are saying is a bunch of rubbish. Democracy is not dictated by the ballot box alone, but democracy is a contract. Elections are a contract. You are elected because of what you told the people, or you promised to deliver to the people. Now, after being elected, you decide to go contrary to what you promised the people, then you have violated democracy, because this is a contract, it's a breach of contract. And the former government has been doing it so for so many times, to the extent that the five-year development plans, to the extent that when we went around and I told the people of the North Bank of the River Gambia, from Bara to Pasimas, that we are going to build a first class highway on the north bank of the river Gambia. They laughed. When I went to my second home, Janjamburi, and I told them that uh, we are going to build a bridge across uh, Sankule Kunda. They looked at him and said, look at this boy, who does he, th look at this boy, who does he think he is? The white man has been here for 400 years, he couldn't build it. Jawara was here for 30 years, he couldn't build it. Who is this little boy who said that he's going to build a bridge there? Doesn't he know that there's a dangerous gene that is there, we're not allowed? Who is yeah, this? Then let us not waste our time by listening to these boys. Today the bridge is there. I don't know whether the gene is there or not, but the bridge is there. Something that the British couldn't do in 400 years. Jara couldn't do it in 30 years. In 17 years, we did it, and I'm proud of that. So also was the story of the North Bank Road. And when we said we were going to build the first bridge, was Mini Mini and Bolon. They said there's a dragon. And when I said I'm going to build the bridge, they said, oh, then the whole of body were opposing the government. They said, our problem is solved. This crazy jeweler touches this river, he's gone. <laughs> we have built the bridge, and it's one of the longest in Africa. It's 400 meters long. And the bridge is still there. So we were told, and I was, that day I was in a very good mood, and you understand what I mean. They came and started lecturing me about television, it's a waste of money, and uh, you are better, I told them, you, you are, the, you see, you people are so dishonest and so corrupt. 
And now I wonder why Africa...